fourth up today, we're thinking about Newton's first and second laws. Very simply put, the first law answers the question, when will you accelerate? And the second law answers the question, what will your acceleration be? More fully, the second law is answering this question. What force is required to produce a particular rate of change of momentum? So on the first question, the first law tells us that you will accelerate if there is a resultant force on you. And if there is no resultant force on you, then you won't accelerate. Simple as that. This is so simple, in fact, you might think, well, why is that important? But if you think about it, every single time we do an equilibrium question, every single time we go, the forces add up to zero, so there's no acceleration or the reverse argument, we're using Newton's first law. So it may be simple, but it's fundamental to our forces calculations. The second law tells us that the when you have a res when you have a resultant force on you, then the rate of change of momentum that it causes is directly proportional to the force. So if you want to double the rate of change of momentum, you need to double the size of the resultant force. And that is Newton's second law. Now, in order to use this, though, if we're going to be measuring forces and we're going to be calculating what force we need, we need an equal sign there. So very sensibly, they chose the constant to be 1. And so this is the form that we use when we're calculating. And so now we're going to see what that looks like for an object that has a constant mass and for an object that is losing or gaining mass. So the change of momentum, the change of anything, is final minus initial. So the change of momentum is mv, final momentum, minus mu, the initial momentum. I can, because m is not changing, so I can factorise that. And then you can see, spot something familiar, V minus U over T, that's the acceleration. And so this is where F equals MA comes from. It is Newton's second law, but only if the object is not losing or gaining mass. So typically, this type of question will involve a rocket of some sort, some sort of jet propelled thing. So this is meant to be my rocket, and it's pushing out the back its um, spent fuel and it's going to be pushing say five kilograms per second of fuel out the back of the rocket and so what that means is that what, what I'm saying is I'm saying that five kilograms every second is being pushed out the back and I'm going to push it out the back with a particular velocity um, and I'm saying I'm going to push it out the back at 10 metres per second. In this situation, it's a little bit easier to think of it as the mass that's changing. So there's our five kilograms per second is going to go in there times by the change in velocity of that mass. So what we're chucking out the back here, it's initially moving with the rocket and then it gets thrown out moving 10 meters per second relative to the rocket, so away from the rocket. So this number here is what's going there. So in my example, there's my five kilograms per second times by the 10 meters per second that the um, gas is speeding up by and so I get a 50 newtons that's the force that's required to produce that so it's up to you how you want to tackle a losing or gaining mass question but whatever have a think about it now pause the video and have a think about it and decide how are you going to tackle these questions and one option is to do it like this and say well there's the the um, number of kilograms per second uh, times by the velocity that it gets chucked out at that's one possibility 
Okay, and once you've decided that, then you can have a go at question four. Okay, here we go. So we're told that the mass of one ion is that, and the engine is ejecting this many ions per second. So that means that my mass per second is this. So we've got this many, sorry, it's this mass for one of them and that many per second. So it's this many kilograms per second. Now I'm going to go for this plan of attack on this question so that because I've got my mass per second and remember this is how much faster the ions are going when they're thrown out so we're told that they are um, have a, they're thrown out at this speed relative to the aircraft there it is as well so we get that notice I'm not I'm deliberately writing everything no rounding till the end Okay, and notice up till now we've been calculating things for the xenon ions. So this is the force that causes the xenon ions to speed up. But, so this is the force that the spacecraft exerts on the xenon ions. But, by Newton's third law, which is the next video, the xenon ions exert the same force back on the spacecraft. So the force on the spacecraft is also this. Now we're being asked to work out the initial acceleration. Um, so at, at the instant of this question, what's its acceleration? And we're told that at the instant of this question, its mass is that. So we're using the spacecraft Yes, its mass is changing, but in this instant, we're told we're told what its mass is for that instant. So we use this version, and so the acceleration is that. So there's the mass of the spacecraft this time. This is the acceleration of the spacecraft. Almost forgot the last part of the question there. State in words the law that you have used to solve the acceleration. There are two possible right answers here. You can either say you used Newton's second law that the um, the rate of change of momentum of the xenon ions is equal to the resultant force on them um, or the same argument for the spacecraft. Or you can say Newton's third law, which we're covering in the next video. You can say um, Newton's third law. I'm not going to state it now because we're about to do it in the next video.